Another of the many technical goodies available at eBay that has uh, happened due to the Arduino uh, popularity is things like stepper motors. And you can buy a stepper motor like this. this you get this uh, in 5 or 12 volt versions. This is a 5 volt version. And you can buy these for 99p, uh, which is inclusive of shipping, which is about $1.50. And likewise, you can get the control modules for it, which have a buffer chip, a Darlington driver chip on them. A seven-way Darlington driver chip, it's a ULN 2003, and it basically takes the inputs, the logic level inputs from your Arduino, and it uh, drives the outputs. You've got four LEDs and four matching resistors to, to match that. And the chip also deals with the diode um, back EMF suppression um, for the motor. And you can get these as pairs. If you just go on eBay and do a search for Arduino motor or Arduino stepper, you'll find them. But you can actually get them as a, a matching set of the driver and the motor for, in the case of the UK, £1.74, which is probably about $2.80 or something like that. So um, not that expensive, well worth playing about with. So um, given the choice of the two modules, I would say get the one with the chip um, in a socket because it just makes sense. You can change the chip if you have a little incident also. Um, the input pins, they've put all seven input pins um, holes for them, so you could add another three pins and just tack leads on and you could drive, use this to drive up to seven loads. You'd only have LED indication for them, but you know, you could do that. So the motors themselves, you wonder, how can they sell a motor for 99p? What application uses a geared stepper motor with a clutch? That you know, uh, uh, it's got a tension clutch in here. That if it stalls or you force it round, it will just slip. But it's still got good torque. And the answer is that the reason there are so many of these motors is because these are air conditioning louver motors. They're designed to tilt the louvers on air conditioning. And it's a really simple way of doing it uh, because all all it requires for a louver is the motor and a little pivot at this end and it goes straight onto the shaft at this end. And when you turn the air conditioning on the computer, it just runs the louver right down to the point it hits an end stop. Um, and it will wind on past that point and either the magnetic uh, field will just slip round or the clutch will slip. And then after a while, um, it'll then stop winding and it knows it's got a definite position. And then it will it can then, from that position, by counting the number of pulses it cycles, it can change either the position of that louver to uh, vertical, horizontal, whatever, or it can cycle it backwards and forwards in uh, designated positions. And again, because it's got the clutch, if the system was running and uh, it wasn't set to position and someone went up and just yanked it round, all it's going to do is slip in the clutch. So um, very neat, nice little motors, uh, very useful. So to try it out, um, I cobbled a bit of software up for a PIC-12 microcontroller and I'll just plug this on. I've got one of these boards hooked up already. And the software I've written, uh, it's running off this little 5-volt um, supply that plugs into the breadboard. The software I've written is just a very simple routine that's going to wind the motor back um, for a, a certain number of time to get the initial start position and then it will oscillate it backwards and forwards in two positions. And you'll see the LEDs will chase too. And all the circuitry that's involved here is the, the power supply and one little microcontroller, the 8-pin PIC-12 microcontroller. So I'm going to um, let this go up to the top when I turn it on. And it's started turning now. And I'm going to go let it go right up to the top. And then I'm deliberately going to stall it when it gets there. So I'm stalling it now. And I can actually feel it just slipping around either magnetically or in the clutch. Now it's stopped because it knows it's got to a final position. And it's tilting down now to a fixed position, pausing, and then tilting back up again. And that's all it's going to do. It's just um, going to swing up and down between those two positions. And by varying the timing of the pulses, you can vary the speed of it. And by varying the number of cycles of the motor, sequential pulses, you can vary the angle of the sweep. So, um, nice, simple bit of software. But um, what would be really interesting is seeing what's inside these motors. So, I've got one here that was a bit rough, as I've written rough in the back of it, because um, it was cogging a bit. Of all the motors I've got, this has been the only rough one, so I'm going to open it. 
So I'm going to use my electrician snips wire cutters, which is not what you'd normally use to prise things open. Not really good for an expensive tool like this, but not to worry. It just happens to do the job. And the construction of the motor is such that the sides of the case are pinched in um, to hold the end plate in. I should mention that the stepper motor is basically a common wire and then four um, coil wires and by sequencing them one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can uh, make it rotate. Okay, so I think that's going to come off. So we'll lift this off. This is the outer plate, obviously part of the gearbox. And that is actually the white plastic bit appears to be the bearing. Here's the main drive and it's got a little one of those little um, spring clips in the end that um, suggests that it's got a spring inside it to actually provide the tension against the end. In fact, it may just be they've pushed that plastic um, sorry, they've pushed that metal disc and they've actually because it looks slightly curved in and that may be what's providing the uh, clutch effect. In here we've got the cog wheels, pliers, and the central drive shaft, so that's just the reducing gears. Now can I lift that out? Yes I can. Doesn't want to come out, but that's okay. So that's the gearbox has just come out. Um, not really much to say about the gearbox, there's not really an awful lot on it other than the gears. Uh, here's the central core, which has a, I'm guessing it's multiple pole magnetic ring around it, and then the sort of the dry output cog. And I can feel that clicking round in steps, so it's a, definitely a permanent magnet. Not a power, actually it's, it's fairly powerful, it is sticking quite tightly to the, um, to the pliers. So what else can I take out here? So there's a armature type plate, is that really what I'd call it, an armature type? Um, and then coils, so this is um. This is poles, magnetic poles, and I can actually see they're staggered. Um, hold on, let's uh, take this to bits further. I think this might slide out now, I'm not 100% sure. Is it going to want the coils to come out too? Yes it is. Okay. So there's another set of plates in the bottom, and then they're in between the two coils. Well, each coil actually has its own um, plate with um, the poles on it. But the coils, there, there just appear to be two coils. And I'm guessing that each of those coils... Oh, this comes off as well. Oh, and there's a circuit board. There's three windings going on with the centre, so I'm guessing the coils are centre tapped. And when they power one side of it up, because the red wire is the common here, and it's going to the centre tap of both these coils, and it's also going to the common positive. Yep, so each, of the white, each side of the coil can be switched to negative, and when that happens, I'm guessing it will change the polarity of the coil. So these coils, uh, in the sequence, one, two, three, four, uh, one coil is probably going... Um, uh, north Pole, and then the next one will go north, and then this one will go south, and then the next one will go south, and that creates a pattern of magnetic fields with these little interlocking rotors that actually creates those steps around. And there's really... that's pretty much it. I don't know if that bit comes out. No, it seems to be stuck in. But yeah, it's very simple. Surprisingly simple. I thought there were going to be multiple windings around this, but it's just those windings acting almost like a multi-fin solenoid. But uh, yeah, very, very good. Uh, very good to play with, quite enjoyable and uh, definitely very affordable too. They're great wee motors. I like them a lot.